Hey what's up guys, this is Fiddle Cubes here and in this video we will be starting the 2048 project and I will be giving you the plan, sort of a layout of all the classes and yes, well, this is the second time I've been recording this because the first time I forgot to put audio in, just, I don't know why, but whatever, I should be a pro at this now. Anyways, first two classes we're going to be creating is the game and start class. The start class is exactly what it sounds like. It contains the main method, creates the window, and that's what starts everything up. This is the beginning, but this is really a really small class, just one method. I like to keep it that way, keep the main method sort of out of where all the other code goes. The actual game class will be will extend JPanel and will be added to the frame that we create in the start class, and it'll have a game loop in it so it'll implement runnable and have its own thread and in this thread they'll be updating and rendering at a rate of 60 times a second it'll also implement key listener and keep track of all key press key release and key typed events even though we won't be dealing with key typed events in this class this class will be in fact keeping track of key typed events itself it's a static class to keep track of all the key states, the previous and current key states, and 60 times a second, the previous state gets set to the current key state. So you'll see how that works. I'll explain it when we get there. And it's basically a Boolean array. Uh, so it's either true if the key is being pressed or false if it's not being pressed. And this, these, uh, this array gets set in the game class which actually has the key pressed and key type methods or whatever. That's the actual class that implements the listener. This class is the one that gets that keeps track of all the variables of which ones are pressed and stuff. The tile class is going to represent basically a game tile. So it's going to have a value. It's going to have an image with the background and the text and it'll keep track of its position relative to the game board image uh, I'm gonna explain that when I get there it's basically the X and Y position of the tile is not relative to the screen but it's actually relative to wherever the game board is set so if the game board set changes position so does the tile change position it's also gonna keep track of combination animations or combining animations and uh, spawning animation so when the block first spawns in and when it gets created uh, when it gets combined the game board class itself this is sort of the mastermind behind everything it holds a two-dimensional array of tiles and it has a move method for combining and setting animation on the tile so the move method has a direction that's going to be left, right, up, or down. And depending on that direction, it's going to shift all the tiles over, check if they can combine, and set the animations, depending if they can combine or if they just move. The key input will be accessed here for key typed events on the four arrow keys. And this class will be directly created and used in the game class itself, sort of right in the main loop. Normally, I wouldn't do this. But because it's such a small game, I decided to put it in there just to keep it simple. And it'll also have a buffered image for the board image. So the board image being the background of the board, not the actual tiles, but the background, like the light gray boxes where empty tile where there's no tiles at, and the sort of dark gray spacing in between. If you haven't seen what the board looks like, then check it out in the previous video where I gave a preview and I gave a strategy for winning the game. These are two sort of helper classes. The draw utils basically does exactly it's just drawing utilities so it can find the width and height of any message based off of um, based off of whatever text you pass in and whatever font you're using. This is good for centering the text on the block and there's going to be a point class that uses row and column instead of x and y because row and column are actually flipped from x and y so I didn't want to use the Java's built-in point class might as well make this simple little class to represent this a little better and the last thing I decided to add to the slideshow this sort of plan is stuff to be added at the end of the game this is stuff that you can add yourself 
and I might get around to tutorials for. I probably will for most of this stuff. Uh, I don't know about bot, and if you bot, basically refers to something a computer that can solve the game. I've play I've used bots before um, that are really cool and effective, and I really wanted to make my own, see if I could. And if I do come up with a way to make my own, I will be uploading a tutorial. App stuff is for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Right now, we're making it for desktop. So it won't be compatible and you need to do you need to jump through a lot of hoops to get it compatible and I may provide a tutorial with that if I ever figure it out myself. The sound, that's fairly explainable. That's just sound. It's not added in currently. I'll probably do a tutorial adding that in or add one at the end of this one. It's not quite implemented yet. And the GUI is like the main menu screen if you want to have like a continue new game, high scores, whatever you want to keep track of. These will be like buttons and switching in between GUI states and stuff. This is something you should definitely try to implement yourself, especially if you're going to use simple buttons. Um, you don't need to use swing. I've made simple rectangle classes act as buttons. Very easy to do. And I may provide a tutorial on that as well. So... That concludes this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one where we start coding, create the game loop and stuff. Uh, so, see you guys there. Bye.